Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining this session. My name is Zach Mead. I'm a marketing specialist at London Road Marketing in, uh, in Lethbridge, Alberta. Um, I'm an ad buying specialist, and today we're going to be running through how to set up a Google Ads account. Uh, sometimes it can be pretty confusing setting up these Google Ads accounts. They don't really make it a simple process, and it's a pretty confusing platform. But once you sort of understand some of the um, intricacies of it from you know someone who knows what they're doing, it's, uh, it gets a little bit easier. Um, so today I invite you to follow along with me. Uh, if you've got your laptop, you can hop into Google Ads and kind of listen to what I'm saying and watch, maybe split screen it. Um, and afterwards, you're actually gonna have the recording of this video. So if you can't follow along with me right now, then you can do it afterwards. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen here. So the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to go to ads.google.com. So the URL is right there. It's gonna pop you into this page here. Um, if you already have a Google account, you can sign in right now. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to create one. Um, and then we are going to create an ads account. So when you click start now, it's gonna hop you into a page that looks similar to this. Uh, at this stage, I already have a couple ads accounts created in here, um, but you're probably not gonna be able to see any listed under yours. So at this point, what you're gonna wanna do is click create a new Google ads account. I should also mention there is a Q and A section that you can leave a question. Um, I will also be hanging out at the London Road Marketing table after this. Um, so if you do have a question, just save it to the end and I'll be in there for a while to, to chat with you. Okay, so, oh, sorry, I need to not be in this part quite yet. So if I click start now, create a new ads account. This is the right page. Okay, so when you first create a new ads account, you're gonna hop into this page. And what this is, is this is, Google's gauntlet of questions, essentially, that they're going to try and figure out exactly the best way to serve you. So they're going to run you through a couple different questions to try and figure out what your goals are, who you're trying to reach, how to best set up your campaign. But if you scroll down a little bit, there's actually this button here that says, are you a professional marketer? Switch to expert mode. And because we're all going to be experts by the end of the session, uh, that's what we're going to click on. Okay, so the first thing when creating a new campaign is Google wants you to choose what your objective is. So depending on you know, what your services are, what your products are, what your goal of these ads are, there's different objectives, um, which correlates to the different types of campaigns you can run because Google has search campaigns, they have display campaigns, they have video campaigns, um, and all of them relate to a different objective. So you can see sales, drive sales online, in-app, by phone, or in-store. Leads, get leads and other conversions by encouraging customers to take action. So let's say you have a website or you have a form on your website uh, for people to fill out and that creates a lead, then maybe this would be a good objective for you. Uh, website traffic, get the right people to visit your website. This is one of the ones that we use most often with small to medium-sized businesses. A lot of times the goal of these search ads are just to you know, let, let's get people from Google searching for specific things related to our business and let's send them to our website. Uh, product and brand consideration, encourage people to explore your products or services, brand awareness and reach. So there's all of these different ones, but for today's demonstration, we're just gonna use website traffic. And this is what I was getting at, that all of those different objectives have different campaign types that correlate with them. So you can see here, there's search campaigns, display campaigns, discovery, performance max, shopping, and video. Well, because we selected website traffic, only search display and discovery campaign types are available to us. These ones are grayed out because it doesn't correlate with our objectives. Uh, so a search campaign, this is essentially what people think of when they think of Google ads. 
you know, a customer or a consumer will go onto Google, they'll search for a specific keyword, that keyword triggers an ad to show up that's related to that keyword, and it's those text-based ads that are listed underneath of Google. Um, display ads, these come in all sorts of shapes, sizes, banners, boxes, grids, and they're those image-based ads that you see placed all around different websites in different spots. Um, so display campaigns are really, really good for reaching a ton of different people, but they're not necessarily great for driving traffic to your website. Uh, discovery ads are a little bit different. So it's only based on Google platforms. And rather than um, a search by a keyword triggering, you know, a text-based ad in Google searches, these are going to show up in different Google feeds on their different platforms. So a, a search isn't necessarily triggering it. Um, shopping campaigns, these are campaigns that they're, they're ads for products essentially, and they'll show up on Google homepage and on the shopping page. And then video campaign, this is those pre-roll video ads that you see before YouTube videos. So today we're gonna create a search campaign. At this point, Google is going to ask you to put your website in. So for today's demonstration, I'm gonna be creating search ads for our marketing agency. So I'm gonna say www.londonroadmarketing.com. Okay, it's just gonna verify that that's a real website. We're good to go. At this point, we are good to continue. You can see this box here about creating a um, conversion action. So what, what this is, is it's gonna give us a code essentially that we would install onto the back end of our website so that Google Ads can track conversions within our website. But because we're not tracking a conversion right now and just for simplicity's sake, we're not gonna do this. Um, this is also one that you can skip in the setup process because after the fact, when we have created our account, Google has a lot of these different tools that we can use to optimize our account. And one of them is connecting your Google Analytics account with your Google Ads account and set up conversions that way. So for right now, we're just going to skip that. Okay, so at this point, we're setting up some of our campaign settings. Um, you can see at the top here, the type of campaign we're running is a search campaign. Our goal is website traffic. So the first thing that it wants us to do is name our campaign. Now there's a bunch of different naming conventions and different ways that you can do this. And some people favor other ways compared to others, but what we like to do so that it's easy to understand what we're looking at from a quick glance is we like to name um, by the the goal of the campaign. So I'm gonna say website traffic, then what type of campaign it is. This is a search campaign and what geographic area we're gonna be targeting. So for me, that's gonna be Lethbridge. So from a glance, I can immediately look at my Google Ads account and understand, okay, this specific campaign is for website traffic, it's search ads and it's in Lethbridge. Um, this is really beneficial when you start to create more campaigns. Let's say you also have a brand awareness campaign and it's a display um, campaign type and you're targeting Tabor, let's say. Um, so you can look at it from a glance and you can see immediately what that campaign is doing. So that's that. Networks. So this section um, Google is trying to figure out where we want our ads to show up essentially. So we have the search network, which is where we want to be. And we have the display network, which is not necessarily what we want to be. If we're creating a search campaign, we want to show up when a consumer is searching for specific keywords in Google and we want to be in their search results. So if we have this display network turned on, our text-based ads are gonna show up in those um, display ad sections on websites and it's gonna negatively impact our results. It's just gonna skew them a little bit. So I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna uncheck that and I'm gonna keep search network and include Google search partners uh, checked off. And um, that's all we need to do there. 
So we could advance, but I'm going to do this drop down. So show more settings. There's just a couple things that I wanted to point out in here. The first one is the start and end date. So you can actually schedule your campaign to start on a specific date and you can schedule it to turn off on a specific date. So this is really good if you're going to run maybe a seasonal campaign for a sale or a promotion you have. Um, maybe you have a specific marketing budget um, and it only lasts for three months and you don't want to spend money past that three months then you can schedule it as well. Um, but for today's sake, we're just going to leave it as this. The second thing I want to point out in here is the ad schedule. You can tell Google what days of the week you want your ads to run. So let's say we only want our ads to run Mondays to Fridays from eight, oops, from eight o'clock AM till 5 PM. Um, so that's a good way to do it if you want to, you know, decide what days of the week you want to run and you can actually customize it by adding different ones. So let's remove this one and say, we want our ads to run Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and then you can specify the time that you want those to run. But for today, we're just going to run them for all days because we want all the traffic. We want all times, all days of the week. We want those people coming to our website. Okay, targeting an audience segment. So this is where you have to start thinking about what you're offering and where you wanna offer those services. So this is gonna differ depending on what you're offering. Let's say you're a company who sells uh, protein powders and you ship those protein powders all over Canada. Well then a more general targeting of Canada is obviously gonna work better for you. But let's say you know, you're a local home renovation company and you're in Lethbridge, Alberta, well, then you have to get a little bit more specific because the people in Quebec don't care that uh, you're in Lethbridge and you're a renovation company. So we can say enter another location and we're going to click advanced search because it gives us a bit more options. So on the right hand side here, you can see a map uh, on the left hand side here. You have some options. So location, uh, we have radius add locations in bulk, and then we can type in where we're targeting. So Google's pretty good about honing in on where you want to target. You can target by country, you can target by province, you can target by city, you can target by postal code. Um, so I'll just show you some of these for example. So let's say I just wanted to target Lethbridge. I just type that in and I can say target. Okay, awesome. Um, this radius is also beneficial. Let's say I wanted to target Lethbridge, but I wanted to include a 20 mile radius around it. I can say target and it's going to create that radius for me. Now, let's say I'm that renovation company and, you know, I don't want to do renovations in Tabor. Well, what we can do is we can type in Tabor, oops, not radius, location. So I can type in Tabor and I want to exclude Tabor because I don't want my searches showing up for people in Tabor. Um, so you can kind of get specific with how you're targeting things here. We can also use a postal code. So let's say I want to target the postal code T0L because it stretches kind of from Calgary down into Southern Alberta. And I say target, well then, it's going to find that postal code and it's going to do that. So you can really section off different pieces of the province. And if you wanted to just do Southern Alberta, you could find all the postal codes under here and really target the entire area. Um, for me, because I'm a local marketing agency in Lethbridge, I am just going to target Lethbridge. So we're good for there. Lethbridge right there, estimated size of 125,000 people. So we can click save. The next section here, languages, usually we're just leaving this as English. If you were living somewhere where um, there was another language that was commonly spoken there, you would add it here, but around here, it's pretty much just English. So we're just going to keep that as that. And audience segments. So this section, you can start to hone in on who you want to really focus on. Um, you can tell Google um, 
the type of people that you want your ads to show up for. So you can separate this by demographics. So there's parental status, marital status, education, home ownership status, employment. There are affinity audiences. So what their interests and habits are, um, beauty and wellness, food and dining, home and garden. And all of these will have drop downs into different categories as well. But they're actively researching or planning. So in market for. Um, so there's a bunch of different industries and stuff in here and you can browse around and figure out what might work best for, for your business. Uh, right under here, how they have interacted with your business, your data and similar segments. So this comes in when you connect your Google ads to your Google Analytics account. And let's say you wanted to retarget someone who's been on your website within the last 30 days, and you want your ads to show up in Google when they're searching for things to be top of mind. Um, you can create these custom audience segments and have Google target those people specifically. So that's pretty cool. And then a combined audience segment is kind of just a combination and a crock pot of all of this stuff. But for now, usually when we're just creating a brand new campaign and we don't have too much data, we don't know necessarily too much about, you know, the people who are searching for this stuff online, we like to just kind of leave this stuff for now. Um, rather than honing in and missing out on some potential clicks and some potential results, we like to leave it. But this is another one uh, where Google has a tool called Audience Manager, where after the fact, we can go in and we can start to customize things, just like those conversion actions. Okay. And Oh, there is something that I missed in here, sorry. Oh, no, not this section, another section. Um, budget and bidding. So this is where we're gonna tell Google how much we wanna spend. Now, you don't wanna go wasting all of your marketing budget on Google ads. Uh, Google search ads are just you know, one piece of your overall cohesive marketing strategy. Um, so we like, to, you know, we like to tell people to start a bit lower, start with what you can afford. And if you can afford it and if results are good and you wanna scale, then you can obviously increase your budget. All of this stuff you can change after the fact. But Google calculates this as a daily budget and a lot of people will usually have a marketing budget of monthly. So let's say your monthly budget for Google ads is going to be $500. Well, we want to find the average of that monthly. So we're going to take that and divide it by 30.4. And that will give us our average daily budget, which for $500, it is $16 and 45 cents. So on the side here, you can see it says for the month, you won't pay more than your daily budget times the average number of days in a month, which is what we just calculated. Uh, some days you might spend less than your daily budget and on others you might spend up to twice as much. So this all comes down to how popular the keywords are that you're targeting, what other advertisers are bidding on those keywords, um, are you getting those bids, are you getting the clicks, are they getting the clicks? So it all comes down to the algorithm and you know what the action is and how many clicks you're getting but it usually unless you're not getting the the search impressions that you were after you you it's pretty good at spending this budget okay and this next part um this is how google is going to bid your money on keywords so google ads are essentially an auction You've got a daily budget, you've got a big list of keywords that you wanna target that are related to your business, but so do other advertisers. So what happens in like split seconds is someone searches a keyword on Google and within that split second, Google runs through an auction of different advertisers to see what their daily budget is, what they're bidding on certain keywords, what their max cost per click is, there's a whole bunch of different factors that go into a bid. Um, and Google uses different criteria to determine whose ad to show. Uh, it can get really complicated, but we don't need to go into it right now. So Google's just asking, what do we want to focus on? And for a brand new campaign, we really just want to focus on clicks. We're driving website traffic. We want clicks. We want people to go to our website. Um, so we're going to keep that. Now there's a couple different options that are grayed out here. So conversions, 
if you created a conversion campaign and you have a conversion on your website that you're actually able to track, then a conversion focus could be good. Conversion value is similar, but you have to set a specific monetary value to that. There's some other optimization options, um, but we don't really need to go into them for simplicity and for you know small to medium sized businesses around here, clicks is gonna you know get you the best bang for your buck. Uh, and then there's this checkbox right here. So set a maximum cost per click bid limit. This gets down to what you as a business owner or what you as a marketer are willing to pay to get a customer or to get that traffic to your website. Um, so you can set this to, I mean, if you set it to $8, that tells Google, okay, Google, in an auction, I'm willing to pay no more than $8 per click. And so Google won't spend over that. But oftentimes what you'll see is you'll set a maximum cost per click and you're getting far cheaper results than that. Um, so to start on a new campaign, we just like to not set this because we don't know what the average cost per click is for certain industries. Um, so we're going to run ads for a while and we're going to see, oh, maybe the average cost per click is around a dollar 20. So then after the fact, after running ads for, you know, six months and we have that concrete data, we can go in and tell Google, Hey, we're willing to spend no more than a dollar 50 on these clicks. So that's that section. Pretty simple. And then I wanted to point this one out as well. So there's a little drop down just below it, show more settings. This one is called ad rotation. So once you've got your account set up, you're gonna have different ad groups and you're gonna have different ads within those ad groups. What this is asking is, do you want Google to prefer the best performing ads or do you want it to not optimize and rotate your ads indefinitely? So for example, if you're going to just create this account and you're not gonna be going into the account all the time to do tests, to you know, have three different ads running and see which ones are performing better, then maybe this one is a more hands-off approach because Google's gonna use its algorithm, it's gonna use its machine learning to, to decide which ads are performing best and push those ones forward. But for someone like us, who's a marketing agency, we're gonna be in the account all the time. We're gonna be in it weekly, we might even be in it daily. We're gonna have different types of ads that we're testing at each time and so we don't want Google to just push forward ones that it thinks are working. We want that concrete data. We want to understand, okay, we were running these three ads at the same time for three months, and this ad had 300 clicks, and this ad only got 34. Well, obviously, we know which one performed better, um, so we like to use this one. So if you're just going to take a hands-off approach, I would click this one. If you're going to be in the account and testing things, I would check this one. And the next section here is ad extensions. So when you're searching for something on Google and an ad pops up, there's the ads have headlines, they have descriptions, um, and then they have extensions, which essentially just give the person more information about your business. So you can see here there's site link extensions, call out extensions, and call extensions. So for example, if I go to Google, and I type in local marketing agency near me. We're gonna get ads that show up. So let's take this first one, for example. Blue Meta, local marketing company, those are the headlines. Every hour that passes is time that could be used to generate sales, stop waiting. So there's their description. There's their URL there, everything's good. Below here, these are called site link extensions. And what these do is they link to specific pages on the website that aren't just the homepage. So there's see our work, meet our expert team, let's connect and digital marketing tactics. Another example just below is blue hat marketing. Um, right here, this phone number that we see, that's a call extension. So what that allows customers to do is that allows whoever searched to immediately have the phone number and without even clicking to the website, they know who to call and where to call. Um, so that's a really good one to have right off the start and it's really easy to set up. So I'm gonna add 
our agency's phone number to ours. So if I go call extensions, add a phone number, I'm gonna have to change this to Canada. And I'm going to do 587-800-3917. Boom. And just like that. Now, just below here, it says conversion action. Google's asking, do we want to track a phone call from your ads as a conversion? Um, and we do. I think that that's a very reasonable conversion for just driving traffic to a website. If someone calls immediately from the ad, Google tracks that, puts it as a conversion, it's cool with me. So we're going to click save. And there you go. Your call extension is turned on. And you can add more. Uh, call out extensions are just little snippets of what your business offers. So for a marketing agency, I could say graphic design. Oops. I could say web design. I could say marketing strategy. And I could say video, videography. So I can click save. And those are just little snippets that'll show up in the ad just below it that give a customer or a consumer just a little bit more information before getting to your website. So playing around with that, there's a bunch of options you can do in there. Uh, but for right now, we'll just save and continue. Okay, so our campaign is set up. Everything's ready to go. We've got a budget. We've got, um, we understand what the objective is. We've got all of our settings. We've got our location, pretty much ready to go. So at this point, we need to set up our ad groups. So how we like to do things is we like to separate things by ad or um, services. So for us as a marketing agency, we offer graphic design, web design, we offer strategy, we offer photography and video. Um, all of these could be different ad groups because this is really where we're going to specify to Google the keywords that we want to target. So right here, you can see ad group name. Um, and then just below, you can see that there's keywords. So what Google did here is it just pulled a bunch of different terms from our website that it thinks would be good keywords. But again, because we're experts, we're going to delete all of these. Now, if you attend my session coming up next Wednesday, I'm gonna really dive into keywords and how to efficiently use keywords in Google, but I'll give you just kind of a general overview of keywords. So there's three different types of keywords. There's broad match, there's phrase match, and there's exact match. A broad match keyword will look like this. So I could say local, marketing agency. What a broad match keyword is, is Google will show our ad to any search terms or search queries that are related at all to this keyword. So for example, if someone searches, what is graphic design? That's going to trigger this keyword and our ad is probably going to show up if they're in that location that we're targeting. Um, so that's one of the downfalls of broad match is that it can be pretty general, but it's a good way to catch all the searches that might be happening. So to start off with an account, um, before you sort of learn about keywords and how to use them properly, broad match is a good way to go. A phrase match keyword will show up in quotation marks. So it'll look like this local marketing agency. And you can notice the quotation marks on the sides here. Um, what a phrase match keyword is, is our ads will be triggered for any search queries that are this phrase rearranged and maybe with a couple words added or taken away. So for example, if someone searches marketing agency in Lethbridge, this search query on Google will most likely trigger this keyword and our ads um, will show up because 
it's got marketing, it's got agency, and it says local. And Google knows we are in Lethbridge and that's what we're targeting. So it'll show up um, for our search results. Uh, phrase match is a really good way to go about things. If you really understand what your consumers are searching, um, you can kind of hone in on the different types of searches like marketing agency in Lethbridge, marketing agency near me. Um, there's a lot of different options. And again, we will go into this further in the next session. So we'll move on to exact match and exact match will show up in square brackets. So it would look like local marketing agency, just like that. And the only search that will trigger this is local marketing agency. It needs to be exactly what is within those square brackets to show up. So those are the three different types of keywords and there's different strategies that you can use to utilize all of them. But for right now, we're just gonna do a couple broad match keywords. So let's say I want to start off and offer our graphic design services. So I'm gonna name my ad group graphic design. So I know when I'm looking at my campaign from afar, this is exactly what the ad group is about. And maybe some of the keywords I'm gonna target are graphic design, logo creation, and let's say branding design. So those three broad match keywords within the Lethbridge region should realistically for small to medium sized businesses, um, just to start off with this account, it should catch a lot of terms just about that. And you can create as many ad groups as you want at this point. Um, you can even start off with a general one and get more specific as you go. But this is kind of the gist of it. So you, you're naming your ad group as what the product or service is. You're adding a couple keywords relating to that. And then we're good to move on to the next part. So we're going to save and continue. Okay. So this is where we get to have a little bit of fun. This is creating different ads. Um, what you're looking at here is called a responsive search ad. So what this is, is there's a bunch of different fields for headlines and you have a bunch of different fields or four different fields for descriptions. Now Google again has auto populated this because of terms on our website, but I'm gonna delete these and we're gonna create some of our own. On the right hand side here, we can see um, the mobile view of what our ad is gonna look like and the desktop view of what our ads are gonna look like. And you can see headlines and descriptions. So let's start adding some stuff. So I'm gonna say London Road Marketing. I'm gonna say Graphic Design. And we wanna to talk to people without using too much jargon. You want to talk in, you want to use terms that people are going to under, want to understand, they're going to want to click on, it's not going to be too confusing. And you really don't need to invent the, the wheel with these headlines, just like be simple. Think of what people are searching for when they're looking for this. So maybe someone's searching for, uh, where do I find graphic design in Lethbridge? Well, maybe one of your headlines could be need graphic design in Lethbridge. Oh, that's too long. Maybe, so we only have 30 characters to use. So maybe instead of Lethbridge, we can say YQL. So something like that. You've got a bunch of different fields here that you can enter for headlines. Um, and then we can move on to descriptions. So let's say, so for us, we remove the mystery of marketing for business owners. So that could be a description one. Um, our graphic design can take your business's print to the next level. Or so I'm just making this up off the top of my head. Um, so you can kind of get creative with that. And what Google is going to do once your ads are running, depending on what keywords 
um, triggered your ad to show up, it's going to show what headlines and what descriptions it thinks are going to perform the best. So we really like using responsive ads because we can test a lot of different headlines and descriptions at once and see what's working. Um, so that's all we kind of need to know there. So we've got our ad created, it's ready to go. And we've got our keywords that we're targeting. We've got our ad group graphic design in the website traffic search leverage campaign. And now the next step is just to move on to billing. So we're going to save and continue. Uh, we're going to have to set our country. So yeah, we're in Canada, set your time zone. We're in the Edmonton time zone. And it says here, uh, oh, this is just, yeah. So introductory offer successfully applied. You'll receive a $600 credit when you spend $600. So it's just Google's way of thanking you to join. Um, these are some check boxes just inviting you to pretty much join their mailing list. So if you don't want to be bombarded by Google, just click no. And then payments. At this point, you're going to want to create a payments profile, which you're going to type in your organization, your name, um, what credit card you're going to be using, and you know your billing information. And then there's just the terms and agreements. So click that and then you would submit. And at that point, your ads account will have been created and those ads will start running. And when people are searching on Google, your ads are gonna start showing up. 